Okay, so today we are working on a coffee cozies or tea cozies, uh, a mug or glass cozy, and we want the curve and the pattern to be about nine and three quarters on the bottom, point to point, and on the top, we want the curve to be all the way to 11 and a half inches. So we're starting at the one to 11 and a half. The total width of this is one, two, three, four inches rounded. Okay, so we've got our measurements and we've got our measurements and we're gonna have three separate patterns. So on the second pattern I have is pretty much the same. It looks like it's a quarter inch uh, shorter. So roughly if you get that, um, you're going to be fine. And we're going to cut two pieces of fabric, one piece of batting. And the fabric, I like to have a different color on the inside than the outside. And one piece of batting, we've got our seam lines matched out. And um, we're going to do, of course, the glass slips in from the top of the cozy. Okay. So, and then our third pattern is a total of, if we do just the body of it, we're looking at 10 inches, and then we have an extra one and a half inch in the center on both sides, and we're going to use the hook and loop to uh, go with all three of these cozies, and all of them we want to cut two fabrics and one batting for the cozy. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the fabrics. When I'm doing that, I like to have uh, the tea or the coffee fabric. We can also do it with whatever fabric colors you like. And we're simply gonna create this. Let me open this. Okay, so on the beautiful blue, we have the uh, gray paisley on the inside, the blue on the outside. I like to have the two different colors. I don't know why, it just makes me happy. I love beautiful colors. But again, since this is a coffee cozy, um, we can have the beautiful coffee look on uh, whatever fabric we want to use. We're gonna have the hooks and loops on both sides so they connect. And look, a beautiful coordinating color. Doesn't have to match like this one perfectly matches, but any two colors that you would like to have that matches your kitchen, matches your cup, matches your car, matches your workspace. Um, these are wonderful. And I don't know, but just touching fabric throughout the day uh, with a beautiful cup of cozy, maybe even a little whipped cream on the top of my, my coffee or my hot cocoa is a wonderful uh, feeling for me. And of course, I'm always walking around with the tea. So I can even put this on the outside of my iced tea because again, as these go around, you just pop the cup in the center of it. And then the perspiration from the ice doesn't get on your hands. And you've got this beautiful, comfy, cozy to wrap your hands around. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down to making a few of these now um, so I can demonstrate how you can put these together. And I do have another one I thought I had here to uh, demo. And so I have one with a coffee bean in the other shape and with my different coffee and espresso fussy cut out of the fabric. And I have my hooks and loops my hooks and loops. And one great thing about the hooks and loops is they can go around any size or this one can even go in mug handles. So this one can go around your favorite mug handle. So that's a, a beautiful thing about this one. All right, so I'm so excited. Let's go ahead, sit down at the sewing machine and get to work on this. And of course, before we can sit down at the sewing machine, we need to choose our fabrics. I've gathered a lot of uh, different coffee or teacup, uh, similar coordinating fabrics. I'm in love with these hearts and I haven't used anything with them yet. So I'm thinking we'll go ahead and use the hearts. I'm wondering if this isn't too dark for each other. Um, hmm, decisions, decisions. Okay, and just quick and easy, we're gonna go ahead and lay down our pattern 
on top of uh, fabric, making sure that our corners aren't going to be cut off at the edges. And then we're going to simply cut around very, very carefully with this. Or what I prefer doing is using a magic marker because it's permanent. We're going to cut on the seams. Just go around with a permanent marker on your patterns, especially if you're doing a lot of them. Then you can cut them out when the rest of the family is sitting at the television set in the evening and you're not missing family time, but you're using your time to uh, trim your fabrics when everybody else is uh, sitting right there with you enjoying their evening television. And one bad thing about using it this way is be careful not to cut your pattern. All right. Oops, see, I cut into my pattern again. Okay, and then don't throw away your scraps. You know we've got a million different scrap projects. We save the scraps for later, and we have our pattern all cut out. Now we need to uh, trim out our uh, batting for the insides. And then we can go ahead and go over to the sewing machine. So let's put away the excess fabric. We're going to make, uh, looks like two of these right now. And we'll get the hooks and loops as well. And then I think, I think with our hooks and loops, we're going to go ahead and use this uh, tannish beige. Works real well on this side. Not so well on this side. But I think I'm okay with that. Because um, I don't see that I have any darker. So we're going to use that for our hooks and loops. Okay, and I found a scrap piece of batting, and we're going to go ahead and use that pattern one more time to uh, cut out. And we need two battings because we're going to do two different cozies. We need one batting per cozy. So let's go ahead and grab our pattern. Put our pattern back over here. And again, this is where I would usually use a magic marker. Just hold the pattern down, draw around the edge with a ma magic marker, and then I can cut this out when I'm in front of the television set with the rest of the family. And I don't miss out on family time, and I'm still crafting. Okay, so here, instead of using the rotary, we're going to go ahead and use the scissors. I'm still using my pattern as my cutting out of my piece here that I need the batting for the two different cozies, cut cozies. And is, this is why it's great to, to keep a hold of your batting scraps because you don't need a large piece for this project. And we can move these all over and get uh, several out of the same piece of leftover uh, batting. So it's a very manageable size. Uh, keep the batting. We can use it to stuff primitive creatures or like our Easter eggs that we made. And of course, make it for projects like this. So it's wonderful to uh, hold on to those scraps and use them on all of our craft and smaller sewing projects. Okay, so our batting is cut out. And again, we're going to save the smaller pieces of the batting that we've cut off for stuffing primitive creatures. And our bigger piece, we can still get several different cozies out of that. So we are going to go ahead and put these together. I'm going to have... I think I want right sides together here. So we're laying these pieces out. We're going to stick a couple of pins in them and take them on over to the sewing machine. Probably going to iron these two pieces first because they have a nice little crease in them. Okay, and then we sew them together. We turn them right side out and we'll add our hooks and loops. 
Okay, so we've got our Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine in front of me, and we have some brown thread, and I need to make a bobbin. So we're gonna go ahead and take our bobbin. We're gonna set it right here, push it down. You'll hear a little snap when it hits the bottom. And here, we're gonna tuck that on there. We have the top, we're gonna push it on. Now this thread is gonna go through here, come back, and it's gonna circle through here and come down. And then on the bobbin, I can take that up again. There should be a little hole or a square. And whether it's a square or an oblong square hole or a round hole, put your thread up through there, grab a hold of it, push it down. So you've got at least an inch you can hold on to there with your fingers. We're gonna push that against, turn the sewing machine on, and then we're gonna push the foot pedal. And when we've pushed the foot pedal, it knows to wind. And once it starts bumping and jumping, we know that we're done. I like to take my scissors or my nippers and cut the very top. We'll throw that away. We're gonna trim this and then I can pull the thread back out of that. And how we thread it is here. And we're gonna skip this all together because now we're doing the thread in the sewing machine up around this button here, down. And there's two little bars that I'm gonna click it under. And then I'm gonna take this, cut the very tip to make sure I'm very sharp. And then we want to go ahead and thread our needle. So let's see if we can see our needle a little bit better. And when we're looking at our needle, just wanna take our thread and raise your needle if you need to and pop it right through that little hole. If you've cut your thread and made it real sharp, you can pop it right through the needle and then I'm gonna pull it in, take it through the foot and push it back. Now, when I start sewing, I'm gonna hold on to this thread here when I start sewing, uh, but on the bobbin, we're gonna go ahead and place it in with the thread coming off of the left-hand side toward me and I'm gonna put it in I'm going to go ahead and there's a little knot right here. I'm going to, whoop, if I can get a hold of the thread again, I'm going to put it under that little notch and then twist it right back. I'm going to take the covering for my bobbin and I'm going to put it right there. Now I am completely ready to sew. I can sew a little piece on here so it doesn't nest up or when I start I'm going to hold on to the thread that came from the top and then we're going to go ahead and start sewing. So I'm very excited about that and we're just going to put... Okay so we have our pieces. We have the two pieces facing each other. Uh, correct sides together, and then the batting on one side or the other. We're going to start sewing near the bottom of the cozy. And we're going to keep a good quarter inch seam all the way around. And again, our seam lines are on our patterns a quarter inch all the way around, but I'm starting right here and I'm going around the corner. I'm gonna leave this place open so I can turn my cozy right side out. stop I'm gonna needle down raise my foot pivot needle down raise the foot pivot and I'm just gonna make this turn so I'm coming up I'm going to make the turn and then I'm going to stop. Okay, so 
So now I can go ahead and pull my threads out. We're gonna trim the threads, turn our piece right side out, but before I turn them right side out, I wanna go ahead and nick off all of my corners so the corners are easier to turn. So let's push the sewing machine back and turn my corners. And that wasn't turn my corners, but cut my corners. So you're just gonna see me nick some off so there's no bulk right there at the corners. trim our threads so they're not in our way. And we have all four corners trimmed. Now I'm going to take my hands, not in between the batting, but between the two uh, right sides, and I'm just going to bunch it up on my thumb to where I can take my thumb to one far reaching corner. And I'm going to stick my thumbnail right in that corner, hold on to it with the other finger and then pull it all the way out to where I can see that corner. And we're gonna flip the whole thing. And again, all these pieces that I trimmed, I can use that in stuffing a uh, little primitive doll. So those, I uh, try not to throw away anything. I like to upcycle, recycle. And that's why I like these coffee cozies as well. When you go to a hotel, we have been using the hotel coffee cozies and those get thrown away and that's just waste and it makes me feel bad. So I'm going to put some of these coffee cozies into our suitcases and that way when we travel, we are going to be happy with our fingers feeling good, our hands feeling good, and we're not going to worry about waste. Now, I'm gonna take this over to the iron and we're gonna press this straight. I can take a needle and I can pull out all of these seams as I do so, and then once we're done ironing, I'm gonna take my sides here, hold on to my corners, turn these under, and we're gonna sew around the entire outside of the edge and when I do that, we're closing up this side and then we'll come back to the, the um, uh, adding on the hooks and loop. Let's go iron. Okay, so we're at our ironing board. We've got ourselves set on the hot setting and I'm gonna go ahead and iron or press my coffee cozy. I do have it on steam. You see the steam, you hear the steam. And it's making it nice and crisp and flat. And I just love these fa this fabric. It looks like those hearts just jump out at me. I am just really delighted with that. Okay, and let's see. This is my side that I sew. I'm thinking I didn't get that corner. So we're gonna pull that corner out a little bit better before I'm happy with that, but everything else looks good. So I am very good with that. Let's go back over to the sewing machine, grab a needle and pop that one corner out. And then we'll see if we need to come back and sew it or not, because I need to fix this piece. Okay, so I've pushed the corner out. We're gonna stick these up in there, just right up into the corner. You see that corner gets so much more crisp just like this one. I think I'm very happy with all of my corners. Now let's do a quick top stitch. You gotta make sure that you're uh, comfortable with the color both in the bobbin as well as in the top of your machine. And we're gonna stitch a scant a quarter or an eighth all the way around here, sealing up our opening first. So we're gonna start on that opening side. Oh, there's my needle, silly girl. And we're gonna hold our threads as we get going. And again, we're just doing an eighth inch or a scant quarter. But we wanna make sure we're locking in that batting. 
and the two layers of fabric, just like on before, needle down, pivot. See this nice crisp edge? That's what we're looking for. It may not be heat easy going around the top. You're making the first one for yourself. You can make a second or third as gifts, but the first one is your practice one. Just try and go slow around it. That easy, even cut. Needle up, pivot. Excuse me, needle down, foot up, pivot. Okay. I'm saying it wrong, but you see me doing it right. Okay, and that last. doing it a little bit faster than I should to be perfectly equal um, but when you sew it please go slower I'm just trying to get this nice demo done for you needle down foot up pivot all done with that now we want to add our hooks and loop and I know that we were planning on this being the inside this being the outside but you can decide which part you want to be inside which part you want to be outside and decide I think I'm gonna keep it with the uh, coffee mugs on the outside all the loving on the inside and we're gonna go ahead and put our hooks in loop. Now, if we come back over here, we're looking to put our hooks and loop. Um, placement for the hooks and loops, placement for the hooks and loops. So we know we wanna come over here, and oftentimes when you purchase this, it is never, ever, ever lined up correctly. So we want to line it up, measure approximately a two inch strip, Cut that off, and then we're going to go ahead and hook it on. Now, for our hooks and loops, we're turning it like so. So we want it both going, one going on the chocolate, one going on the tea mugs. And that way we're going to hook together, okay? So let's go ahead and put one right here. And one right here. And sew them on. I hate losing that, that mug. I was thinking about doing it different so I wouldn't lose that pretty little mug. Maybe I'll do it this way. So we'll put it on the underneath here and on the top here. So I'm okay losing the coffee, but I like that little orange mug. So we're gonna do it that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and start sewing these pieces on. And we're just gonna bring our threads to the back of the machine. We're still doing our straight stitch. We're gonna put the start of the hooks and loops about a quarter inch in. We're just going to go around on the edge of the hooks and loops. Um, if you want extra secure, because you're rough and brutal, we can do an X on the top of it after we go around the square. I'll show you what I mean. Again, no harm, no foul, if you take it from one quarter and draw it over to the other. We're making our X. And that's just awfully, awfully secure. But our hooks and loops is permanently fixed. I tend to sew a lot more than necessary. It's not necessary to go over it and over it like I do, 
um, but we have that sewn on. I don't know if you like the X on it or not. Probably looks better without the X. But now let's go ahead and put it on our other side. And to close this up properly, we now have to put it on our hearts. So I'm gonna take the other piece of Velcro, and we're gonna see where we put it, roughly in the very center, because we want it to match up. And we're gonna go ahead and sew this down. Instead of doing the X, this time you saw me go down more than once on the edge so that I feel like it's very secure. And then, um, now I did this because I wanted to show you. Um, I feel like it's very secure either way, but I wanted to show you what it looks like with the X versus with the multiple lines. So this is with the multiple lines. You see that it's on and secure. This is with the X on the hooks and loops. So you can decide how you want it. Either way is perfectly fine. And we can do it with the hearts out, or we can do it with the hearts in. So again, it's however you want your drink cup. And notice on these, it's thinner at the bottom, it's wider at the top as our drink cups are. So again, reversible, however you want it. But like I already said, I kind of want to keep the hearts to myself and keep the coffee on the outside. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial as we have made a coffee cozy together. And I'm going to go ahead and continue and make one more uh, real quickly. So if you want to uh, continue with me, please, please, please do. If I uh, think of any other tips and tricks along the way, I am going to let you know. But for now, let's go ahead and sew these together. And I'm going to do it approximately the same way that I did the first one. Unless I dream of a better way in route. And again, when you're sewing at home, um, you're probably comfortable slow, uh, sewing a little slower. But again, I wanted you to be able to see it without wasting your time here this morning. Like to make sure my edges, my points are secure. And I know personally I'm going to be tugging at the opening when I turn that seam, so I usually go over it twice. Cut our excess threads, trim our corners off. in our stuffing can. Our fingers between the two correct sides of the fabric. Put our thumb in there, work it all the way over to the very, very end. We're going to grab one of the corners. We're putting our thumbnail right there, our other finger right here against that finger, and pulling it through. Once we have that, we can grab a hold of it with our other hand and turn the entire cozy right side out. And then once we have it right side out, we're going to push out our corners. And 
and it's always, you can also use your scissors. Just plop your scissors in there, reach over to that far end, find that corner, push it out, and you've got a nice point, a nice point, a nice point, nice point. Okay, so let's go ahead and fold this over like we did. Pull it out, fold it in, bring it over to the ironing uh, board, and we'll be right back. If these sides don't want to come out, we can grab a needle and hold them out as we iron so that it presses perfectly perfect. Perfectly perfect. Okay, be right back. I'm going to iron it. Okay, and our cozy is all pressed. And we're going to go ahead and sew on the edge that we folded together first. So we're going to plop that in here. And we're going to do a scant quarter or an eight all the way around. Needle down, foot up, pivot. these or you can make these. This is the standard size, but you want to change it to fit a larger cup or a stockier mug. Once you have made one of these plate around, with it, it is easy to alter this pattern. Do not, do not, do not let the pattern make or break. It. You can go to your favorite coffee shop Get one of their paper throwaway ones, open it up, make it a good half inch larger on all sides, or at least a quarter inch larger on all sides, and create your own pattern as well. All right, and we are all set. We're going to go ahead and trim off our threads. And voila, I'm loving it. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our hooks and loops and try and put this together and cut another, there's the end. Uh, on the hooks and loops, one of them is like this fibrous and one of them is like this plastic scratchy. You wanna make sure that you get approximately a two inch piece. I'm not measuring anything. Um, of both of these even. And then just like before, we're going to put one on one side, one on the opposite side, and sew it down. Ooh, pull that apart. Okay. So no pattern to mess up there, so I'm happy with that. We'll put the sewing machine back over. Hope you can see that okay. And we're just going to sew this down. And again, I like to secure it so you'll see me run over it more than once. And Sylvia is working on a 4th of July patriotic quilt here in the studio as well. threads. Trim the first threads where we started. We'll have to trim that one again. I didn't cut it short enough. But we have that. Now on the opposite side of the cozy, on the heart side, we want to put the other one. So again, we're going to make sure our placement is approximately in the center. So we match up right over the first stitch lines. Pull my thread backwards, place this under the foot, make sure we've got the single stitch line uh, marked. Let's get started.
just that quick. We have one cozy for ourselves. And one to give as a gift. These are finished and ready to use. So again, gather your favorite fabrics. I recommend something that matches the kitchen, or matches your workspace, or denotes the kind of flavor that you're going to wrap this around. And we have our beautiful, beautiful drink cozy. I'm loving it. And again, these are interchangeable, so I'm going to wrap it around the opposite direction and hook and loop that closed. We've got the lower portion for the smaller end of the cup, the bigger one for the top, and we are ready to go drink our hot beverage. Or like I said, pop your iced tea cup right in here and you won't sweat it on your fingers. It'll be much more happy to carry around. Okay, my friends, thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial today and make these for yourself. They are absolutely wonderful gifts to give. Quick, easy, simple sewing, wonderful fun. Have a great day.